Hey folks, welcome to Digimento. This is uh, Electronic Device and Circuits Lecture 11. So uh, hopefully you must have gone through all the lectures uh, that I covered before. And uh, in the last lecture, we uh, we ended the last lecture with the Fermi direct function. So let me start uh, with the Fermi direct function, which is very much important with respect to gate and uh, IES and other, any other PSU, PSU examinations. Most of the questions are also many questions are also asked in uh, uh, in uh, uh, du during the counseling uh, counseling in IIT uh, uh, when uh, you basically go for MTech admissions. So they take interview and test. So they ask questions if you are going to pursue in VLSI. So they will ask questions from the Fermi direct function. Okay. So we are going to start with the Fermi direct function. Okay. Let me put a heading. Fermi. Okay, so uh, I said that uh, Fermi direct function is basically the probability distribution that represents uh, the gives which gives the probability of uh, finding an electron at a particular energy level. Okay, so we wrote it as f of e is one upon one plus e to the power e minus e f by k t. K t is Boltzmann constant in elect uh, an electron volt. And E minus E F is also in electron volt. T is in Kelvin. Okay. So it just tells you the probability of finding an electron at a particular energy level, and it's a strong function of temperature. As you can see, it increases with increase in temperature. Uh, does not it does not show how many. It does not indicate how many. Uh, does not indicate the number of electrons present at a particular energy level. It gives you the probability. Okay. So. So uh, let's discuss about some cases which are linked with the the Fermi direct function. So we discuss the first case at t is equal to zero Kelvin, which is at the at uh, the absolute temperature. What is the effect? So so we get two conditions. First, if E is greater than E f, if we talk about the energy levels greater than the Fermi energy level. Then what will be your f of e? f of e will be equal to one plus one upon one plus e to the power e to the power plus infinity because e is greater than e f and t is zero. So one by zero is infinity and this will be plus infinity. This becomes equal to zero. From here we can say that probability at t is equal to zero Kelvin, the probability of finding an electron at any energy level greater than the Fermi energy level is equal to zero. Okay. Now, if e less than e f, then f of e will be equal to one upon one plus e to the power minus infinity. What is this thing? It is equal to one or hundred percent probability of finding an electron on the energy levels at the energy level uh, on the energy levels less than e f is equal to one, which is hundred percent. Okay, so. So from here we can say that electrons definitely exist on the energy levels less than EF. We know that uh, what is EF basically is the maximum energy possessed. By an electron at zero Kelvin. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Now, second case we take for temperature not equal to zero Kelvin. Then, uh, what will be the effect? Okay. So, for the temperature, so let's say if E is equal to E F. If e is equal to e f, then what will be your f of e? f of e will be equal to one plus e to the power zero, which is equal to one by two, which is equal to fifty percent. Which means that we can define e f s is the energy level where the probability of finding the electrons is fifty percent. Okay, at t not equal to zero Kelvin, and it is also defined as the maximum energy possessed by an electron at t is equal to zero Kelvin. Okay, so. Fermi level, Fermi energy, we can define it as E F 
is the energy level is the energy level where probability of finding an electron is 50% okay for temperature greater than 0 kelvin so at t is equal to 0 kelvin at t is equal to 0 kelvin the ef represents that but energy level where the probability of find, uh, where the electrons possess the maximum energy okay so now in this case we know the uh, if uh, fe represents the if fe is the probability of finding an electron then 1 minus f of e is the probability of finding a hole okay so we can say that uh, probability of uh, finding a hole is so which is equals to 1 minus f of e is equal to 1 upon this is 1 minus 1 plus e to the power e minus ef by kt okay so if you solve this thing it turns out to be equal to 1 upon 1 plus e to the power minus e minus ef by kt so this is an important relation also probability of finding a hole at energy level is equals to 1 plus e to the power minus e minus ef by kt okay so it's clear from here now let's have a look at the uh, probability plot so let me just show you so let's have a look at the plot so this basically represents a probability distribution uh, plot where x axis is taken as e minus ef and uh, y axis is taken as f of e so this plot if we just consider t at t is equal to 0 kelvin so if we consider the temperature t is equal to 0 kelvin then this is the plot this represents at t is equal to 0 kelvin where if e minus ef is less than 0 is ne if it is negative the probability of finding the electron is 1 which is 100 percent and if e is greater than ef or e minus ef is positive that will be equal to 0 now if we increase the temperature if we keep on increasing the temperature the plot the, the plot basically suppresses downwards so as you can see this represents the temperature this represents the temperature at 300 kelvin so this represents the temperature at t is equal to 300 kelvin okay and the green one represents the temperature above 300 kelvin let's say it is uh, t is equal to 2500 kelvin so the plot basically suppresses downwards if we increase the temperature so this is uh, basically the uh, the plot the Fermi plot of the Fermi Dirac function okay so now the equation now let's let, uh, now let's find out the concentration of electrons in the conduction band so we can say the equation the equation of electrons in the conduction band in the conduction band is given by so dn okay dn is n e into f of e we can say d f of e dn is the electron concentration and this comes out to be e c plus e c to infinity n of e f of e d e so this represent this this equation represents the concentration of electrons in the conduction band where we know what is f of e we know f of e is, is basically the probability of 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 uh, finding an electron finding an electron at particular energy level and what is n of e n of e is density of states 
in the conduction band. It represents the density of states. Density of states is basically represents how much denser the conduction band is with the energy levels. Okay, and N of e for this thing, N of e for conduction band for electrons is gamma e minus e c to the power of three by two, where e is greater than e c and gamma is equal to is basically a constant is equal to four pi by h cube two m to the power of three by two. 1.6 into 10 power minus 19 to the power of 3 by 2. This comes out to be 8.62 into 10 to the power 27. This is a constant and you don't need to remember this particular value. You, you should basically be clear with the last expression that I'm writing right, writing here. This equation, so in this case, putting this, putting all of these things in the in the previous equation, the integral equation, you get on solving we get electron concentration as nc n is equals to nc e to the power minus e minus ec by kt so this is basically the electron concentration in the conduction band this equation is very much important okay this is the electron concentration nc is the is again the density of state there is an expression uh, to describe mc nc that i will explain later okay this is basically the concentration of electrons in the conduction band understood now let's have a look at the equation equation of whole force concentration in the valence band okay now the whole concentration is equal to integration minus infinity to ev ev is the is basically the uh, top uh, topmost energy level of the valence band this is equal to n of e density of states into 1 minus f of e de okay this equation is also important okay probability of finding of holes where 1 minus f of e is probability of finding holes and uh, n of e is again the density of states which is equal to gamma ev minus e to the power of 3 by 2 where ev is greater than e for all the energy levels below ev and gamma value comes out to be 6.82 into 10 to the power 27 you don't need to remember this particular value is not important not important okay so finally we just solve you get whole concentration as nv e to the power minus of e v minus e upon kt so you get p is equal to e to the power e c e to the power minus of ef minus ev upon kt so you get it as p is equals to nv e to the power ef minus ev by kt please make a small correction here n is equals to nc e to the power minus ec minus ef by kt this is the expression that you will get finally okay these two expressions these two equations are very much important i mark this as important separately now let's now discuss about the fermi level for intrinsic semiconductor okay so so we are going to discuss here fermi level in intrinsic semiconductor okay now we know that uh, for an intrinsic semiconductor n is equal to p so this is n electron concentration will be equal to nc e to the power minus 
E C minus E F upon K T is equal to P, which is N V e to the power minus E F minus E V upon K T. Okay, we know N is equal to P in this case. So we just take N C N V here. This becomes e to the power minus E F plus E V plus E C minus E F upon K T. So this becomes N C by N V becomes equal to e to the power minus E C plus E V minus two E F upon K T. So if we solve for E F, you get E C plus E V by two minus K T L N N C by N V. Okay. So or you can also write it as E F is equal to E C plus E V by two. Plus K T L N N V by N C. So this is the Fermi energy level for intrinsic semiconductor. You can easily solve if you don't remember this particular uh, uh, equation. Okay, and this equation has already asked in I E S examination. So, so it only depends on temperature. You can see it depends on the temperature. Your N V and N C are also dependent on temperature. That we shall see. In the in the for in the for for the lectures, okay. So the, uh, this result basically arises uh, some cases that we need to discuss, <coughs> okay. So case one. Now we know that uh, N C and N V are dependent on uh, the mass of an electron or a hole, okay. So they are dependent on the mass of electron and hole. So if we just say N V depends on M N, uh, M V depends on M P and N C depends on M uh, N, as we already saw in the previous lectures that N N V the equation for N C is the equation for N C is two into two pi k bar t M N upon h uh, square to the power of three by two. Okay, and similarly for N V it dip, uh, two into two pi k bar t M M P upon h square to the power three by two. They both depend on M N and M P. So for in general, if uh, M P is equal to M N. Which is basically not true. It's just an assumption. We are taking basically an assumption. Okay. If this is true, then we can say then N C will be equal to N V. Then L N one will become equal to zero. This is true. Sorry. This is by two. If uh, this becomes equal to zero, and then Fermi energy level will be equal to E C plus E V by two. Then there shall not be any uh, effect on of temperature on Fermi energy level. It will remain at the middle. Of the of the energy of the energy uh, distribution band gap, so this is the position of the Fermi energy level. Okay, so always at the middle of energy band gap. Now, let's move on to case two. So. Now let us discuss case two of this thing. Now, let T is equal to zero Kelvin. If temperature is equal to zero Kelvin, then E of f will be equal to E C plus E V by two, which means that at T is equal to zero Kelvin, Fermi energy level is at the middle of the energy band gap. Okay. So there is no, uh, you can say at T is equal to zero, it act as an insulator. There is no breaking of covalent bond, so the concentration of electrons and holes will be equal to zero. So if you just see at the energy band diagram, so this is basically the Fermi energy level E F F, and this is E V, this is E C. So concentration of electrons is basically equal to zero, and concentration of holes is also equal to zero. This is how we represent. Okay. 
okay now let's discuss case 3 of this thing what is case 3 then at t now we are increasing the temperature now we increase the temperature now let temperature is equal to 300 kelvin okay then we can say that e of f is basically ec plus ev by 2 minus kt by 2 ln nc by nv okay so uh, when a temperature is a 300 kelvin so the uh, we, uh, we are assuming that uh, 300 kelvin in intrinsic semiconductor fermi level is not exactly at the middle of the energy band gap that's we, that's what you can we can easily see so it's at the not at the middle okay so we know that uh, for silicon and germanium we know that mn is greater than mp okay so we can say that nc is greater than nv so this this we, we can say that ln nc by nv will be a positive value okay so if we keep on increasing the temperature the difference will decrease which means that fermi energy level will start to move in the downward direction okay so <clears throat> middle the energy the difference between the uh, the middle of the energy band gap and this expression will decrease so hence ef will decrease ef de start decrease starts decreasing so ef will basically move in the downward direction so we can say that ln nc by nv will be a positive value okay and increasing okay so we can say that e of f shifts shifts below the middle slightly with temperature okay now we know for gallium arsenide for compound type semiconductor we know that mp is greater than mn which means that nc is less than nv which means that ln nc by nv will be negative which means that ef will basically move upward if we increase the temperature the whole expression will be basically ef will start moving upwards okay so we can say here that ln nc by nv is negative hence ef slightly shifts upward with temperature okay so at 300 kelvin is very close to uh, the middle of the energy band gap so by default if we just uh, have a look uh, at uh, the energy band diagram so if we just have a look at 300 kelvin so we are considering at uh, 300 kelvin by default we are considering silicon this is the conduction band this is basically the valence band this is the middle of the energy band which is middle this is middle and the fermi energy level at 300 kelvin will be slightly shifted downwards okay this is the fermi energy level at 300 kelvin okay so if we just have a look at the concentration uh, diagram this is the conduction band and this is basically the valence band so the concentration of electrons and holes will nearly be the same okay so this is the concentration this is how we represent the concentration of holes and electrons this represents this is the conduction by 300 kelvin same area okay same area okay same concentration of electrons and holes this is at t is equal to 300 kelvin okay so if you just have a look if we just uh, draw the diagram like this the area will this area and this particular area will be the same this area and this area same 
okay this because we are talking about the intrinsic semiconductor this represents electron concentration and this represents hole concent concentration okay understood so this uh, now let's discuss about the case 4 now case 4 what is the case 4 says okay so the position of uh, ef at different temperatures okay what are the positions of uh, fermi level at different temperatures then uh, let's have a look let's draw it neatly here so that it is more clear to you what am i doing here this is the conduction band this is the valence band now at uh, t is equal to 0 kelvin it is basically equal to basically it is basically in the middle okay this is the fermi energy level at t is equal to 0 kelvin so this is at t is equal to 0 kelvin now at if we increase the temperature if we increase the temperature what would what would that be now if we increase the temperature fermi energy level shifts downward slightly So, this will be the diagram, okay. This represents the diagram. Let us say this is the temperature at T is equal to 300 Kelvin. And if we further increase the temperature, it will further shifts downwards. So, this is the Fermi energy level at T is equal to 300 Kelvin. So, you can say it's like this, okay. So, this is at T is equal to 330 Kelvin. Assume we are just assuming. So, Fermi energy level shifts downward. And this is for silicon and germanium, okay. So, this is the discussion uh, related to the intrinsic uh, semiconductor. Now, let us move or uh, let us discuss about the n type semiconductor. Okay. Now, we should discuss about the Fermi, the Fermi level in n type semiconductor. Okay. <coughs> Okay, uh, so for anti semiconductor, we know n is equal to nc e to the power minus ec minus ef by kt. We are assuming it is heavily doped, so n is nearly equal to nd. Whole concentration is nearly negligible, so we are not considering that. So we can write it as nd is equal to nc e to the power minus ec minus ef by kt okay so we can say that nc by nd is equal to e to the power ec minus ef by kt so from here we get ec minus ef is equal to kt ln nc by nd is long so this expression is important so we can say that ef is basically equal to ec minus kt ln nc by nd okay so here you can see that uh, ef depends on both temperature and doping 
because nd is independent of temperature and it is also dependent on temperature uh, and it is also depending on temperature t and c also depends on temperature t nd does not depend on temperature now let's discuss the case one it follows some cases that we need to discuss for better clarity so this is case one so what does the case one say okay now at t is equal to 0 kelvin t is equal to 0 kelvin ef will be equal to ec which means that at t is equal to 0 kelvin it acts as an insulator this is your ec and this basically equal to ef fermi energy level lies here and the concentration of electrons and holes will be equal to newly formed concent newly formed uh, uh, the electrons and holes which are thermally generated is equal to zero i'm not talking about those electrons which are already present due to the doping okay i'm talking about the breaking of covalent bonds no covalent bonds will be will be, will will, uh, will break at t is equal to zero kelvin okay so thermally generated electrons and holes will be equal to zero okay this is conduction band this is valence band understood so no concentration i'm showing it is just a line does not show the concentration okay now let's discuss about the case 2 so this is case 2 what does the case 2 say now if we increase the temperature at t is equal to 300 kelvin now if we increase the temperature what would happen EF is basically equal to EC minus KT ln NC by ND. Since we are not changing your ND, so here we are not changing ND, we are just increasing the temperature. So as you can see, if we increase the temperature, this whole term will increase, this whole term will increase and the difference will decrease which means that Fermi energy level will start to move downwards. So so we can say at room temperature which is 300 kelvin firm ef lies below the conduction band and also lies below the donor energy level it is experimentally found this is experimentally found so at t is equal to 300 kelvin your fermi energy level lies below the conduction current conduction energy level and also below the donor energy level okay so this is how it looks at 300 kelvin so this is basically your ec this is basically your ev so this is basically your e D donor energy level. So Fermi energy level at 300 Kelvin lies here. This is E F at 300 Kelvin. Okay. It lies below the donor energy level. We know donor energy level is 0 0.05 electron volts for silicon and uh, 0 0.01 electron volts for germanium at 300 Kelvin. So this is at 300 Kelvin. So if you just have a look at the concentration diagram concentration diagram so the concentration diagram looks something like this okay this is the electron concentration sorry oh, wait let me just this is how this is how it looks uh, this is the conduction band this is the valence band this is the concentration of electrons at 300 kelvin and the whole concentration will be very small the concentration of electrons is greater okay so So we can say that uh, Fermi energy level EF is closer to conduction band than valence band at 300 Kelvin. Then we can say we can say that electron concentration is greater than hole concentration. Okay. So maybe we can say this so how can we draw the concentration the actual concentration diagram for this particular thing so this is basically the conduction band 
and this represents the valence band this is valence band this is conduction band this is ec this is ev okay so you can see that uh, this is the fermi energy level this is the fermi energy level e of f so the concentration will be something like this okay so this is how we represent the concentration diagram the concentration of electrons and what is how do we represent the whole concentration whole concentration will be equal to now the whole concentration will be equal to so this is how we represent okay this is the whole concentration so at so this is basically the electron concentration this is electron concentration this is whole concentration okay understood so uh, i i was really i'm literally sorry for the bad drawing so just uh, so i think it must be clear to you so this is, this is this basically represents 1 minus f of e this red line represents f of e okay so this represents the electron concentration this represents the whole concentration okay now let's move on to the fourth case now this is case 3 uh, case 3 discuss about the mathematical analysis okay so let's do the mathematical analysis we know this thing that ec minus ef is kt ln nc by nd okay now the effect of temperature okay so let temperature increases above 300 kelvin okay then we know that uh, nc is proportional to t to the power 3 by 2 okay so if nc increases and then nc will increase greater than nd so we can say that ec minus ef will be positive which means that ef will always remain below ec which means that ec is greater than e of f so we can say that fermi level moves away from conduction band and downwards okay it moves downwards hence and ef moves towards efi intrinsic fermi level then conductivity decreases as we saw as i already saw that the curve of the for the intrinsic semiconductor between conductivity and temperature it comes out like this for greater temperature greater than 300 kelvin it starts to move like this up to curie temperature where it becomes intri intrinsic semiconductor okay so the positions will change so at very high temperature so we can say that uh, at t is equal to tc at the curie temperature the fermi level the e of f will be at e of fi so it becomes intrinsic at curie temperature it's very large which is 1000 to 1400 degrees celsius there okay now let's discuss about the effect of doping what will be the effect of doping on this 
now let doping concentration nd increases okay so what would happen then and let consider that nd is greater than nc if nd keeps on increasing then we can say that e is ec minus ef is less than zero we can say that ec is less than ef even if your nc is greater than nd if you increase the doping concentration the fermi level starts to move in the upward direction okay and if if it becomes greater than nc then ln nd by uh, then ln nc by nd will become negative and ec minus ef will become negative so as you can see from uh, the expression from the from here ex, uh, from, from this particular expression if nc if nd is greater than nc this big expression becomes negative and ec minus ef becomes negative then we can say that ec is less than ef fermi energy level starts to move in the upward direction and if once the fermi level energy level enters into the conduction band the doping is very very high if it enters into if it enters into the conduction band the semiconductor becomes degenerate heavily heavily doped so you can say we have different cases if nd is equal to nc if nd becomes equal to nc then ec is equal to ef or you can say that ec minus ef is equal to zero okay now second if nd is greater than nc then ef is in conduction band degenerate semiconductor heavily doped okay and if for the third case if nd is less than nc then ef is below the conduction band and semiconductor is moderately doped so we are basically increasing doping from 1 is to 10 to the power 6 to 1 is to 10 to the power 3 okay so by we can conclude that in n type semiconductor if nd increases then ef moves towards the conduction band or ef moves away away from the center of the energy band here and we know the very fact that n is sigma is equals to q mu n nd so if your nd increases your doping increases so your your conductivity increases so conductivity increases okay that's what we can easily conclude from here okay now the the case 4 is last case of this discussion the case 4 says what case 4 is basically the position position of ef with intrinsic fermi level or you can say shift in the position of ef with respect to efi okay we have a formula for that that you should know and you should remember because it's very much important the shift or this is basically ef minus efi ef minus efi is equal to kt ln nd by ni
okay so you can say if you just see this thing this is conduction band this is valence band this is e of i and this is e of f so this represents the shift distance is ef minus e of i is equal to kt ln nd by n i and this is also in electron volts okay that's all folks i am stopping here you should uh, go through this concept uh, thoroughly you should be well versed with these concepts because it's very much important topic some uh, the the couple of lectures that i am going to discuss now is very uh, are very much important uh, with respect to gate and ies thank you very much